now is Washington State Democratic Congressman Adam Smith. He's also ranking member of the House Armed Services Committee. Uh, Mr. Smith, thank you so much uh, for being here this morning. I I'm going to toss something at you that I know you weren't expecting, but we just got it uh, to us, the grand jury report that was released. Uh, it's about 26 pages long. Um, and the, the, the panel recommended charges against a sitting U.S. senator and two former senators. I just want to get your take on that. Obviously, the senator uh, was uh, GOP Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina. I just want to get some sense of what you think of what happened here and the fact that Fannie Willis did not actually go forward with indictments against them. Yeah, I mean, everything around this, around the election of 2020 and all of the efforts by the, the former president, uh, President Trump, to try to overturn that election, as we all know, it's incredibly serious. Uh, now, in any election, you know, you, if you have a close election, there may be people who legitimately say, well, I'm not sure this was right or that was right. And then there is a method for doing that. You can file lawsuits and do all manner of different things. It is very, very clear. Uh, that Trump and his supporters went way beyond that and actually tried to do things that are not legal to overturn a legitimate election. Who did precisely what? Um, I haven't, you know, dove into it in great depth. We do have other other issues that I do have some control over that I'm focusing on. Uh, but it's a very serious thing, and we need to keep keep an eye on it and see exactly who played what role. Look, you can't simply try to overturn an election because you didn't like the outcome. You can't go trying to pick electors for the presidential election who are not legitimate electors. Uh, so I think uh, there are a lot of people who got themselves in serious trouble, and I'm sure that will sort itself out uh, as this prosecution goes forward. All right. We will move on to things that you do have some control on. Uh, I want to talk to you about uh, the, the funding of the government. Uh, the, the members of the Republican uh, Freedom Caucus are making three very big demands that they say they're going to block uh, any more monies, any more funding of the government if these three things aren't acted upon. One of them is to include the House passed Secure the Border Act. They say to stop illegal immigration, human trafficking, and, and the influx of fentanyl. The second is they want diversity, education, and inclusion. The DEA language and programs out of the military and they want to address what they say is the unprecedented weaponization of the Justice Department and FBI. Um, I'm curious if there is anything on that list that Democrats might compromise on. I don't think so. I mean, look, those are fairly narrow items that I I'm sure are important to the Freedom Caucus, but we, we live in a democracy. <clears throat> the House, the Senate, and the White House have to agree in order to keep the government funded. We've got a lot of items on our wish list. I mean, the president's Build Back Better agenda, um, most of which did not get passed to provide better child care um, to Americans, to give more support for families on health care. We have a lot of issues that we would like to see passed that the Republicans don't support either, um, which are tangential to the issue of funding the government. We're not going to insist upon those to, to fund the government going forward um, because we know we don't have the votes. The Freedom Caucus doesn't have the votes for those issues either. If they choose to shut down the government because of that, I think that is an unfortunate choice, not just by them, but by Speaker McCarthy, because we have the votes to pass a clean CR. I believe we have the votes to pass a defense bill and fully funded appropriations bills. But you've got that small group of members of the Freedom Caucus who don't believe in democracy. Uh, they believe in their own opinion. Uh, so even if the votes exist, they'll try to block it. And there is considerable reason for concern that, that Speaker McCarthy will let them. And he won't allow us to have a vote on a clean CR um, to keep the government funded or the appropriations bills that could fund it. So, you know, I mean, it, it's a discussion, but those issues are non-starters for me and I think every single Democrat. And we're not going to support them just because the Freedom Caucus is going to shut down the government if we don't. Um, so we'll, we'll see how all that plays out in the next couple of months. And we will certainly be watching. I do want to talk about someone else who is blocking things, Tommy Tuberville. Uh, 300 military promotions. He's holding those up. He's a single senator doing this. Uh, his battle is over uh, another issue, women's reproductive rights, and, and whether the, the Pentagon is going to end up paying for travel for service members who go out of state to get uh, a legal abortion. I, I do want to ask you about why you think Senator Tuberville is doing this. Is it just about that niche issue or is there something else there? And, and what's your frustration with it? 
No, it's just about that issue. And, and look, he's doing it again. And I, I say this, um, he doesn't believe in democracy. All right. He doesn't believe in the system of government that we've set up. You know, you have a vote, you lose, you move on. Uh, what he and the Freedom Caucus believe is if you don't get what you want, do as much damage as you possibly can to the government. Uh, that's an incredibly destructive approach. In this case, it's incredibly destructive to the defense of this country to the national security uh, of this country, to not be able to have top leaders appointed to their position really undermines our ability to protect this country, bottom line. And look, I know he doesn't support the travel policy. Joe Biden won, okay? Joe Biden put that policy in place. Uh, if Senator Tuberville doesn't like that, well, go support a Republican candidate for president next year. Go to the ballot box and make your case. But to undermine the ability of our country to defend itself just because you didn't get your way on one piece of policy is destructive and wrong. Now, now personally, I wish the Senate would change their rules so that one senator doesn't have that kind of power, so that we actually would have a democracy where you have a fair vote, the result comes out, and you go forward. Right. Uh, but the Freedom Caucus, Senator Tuberville, you know, they don't care. That they will do as much damage as they can if they don't get their way. And it's really bad for this country. I just want to really quickly, lastly, ask you about the polling that has come out. You talked about the fact that President Biden is the president. Uh, he has an agenda he is trying to get through. Um, and But this new polling is saying in 2024 that there are serious concerns by Democrats uh, about his age and about whether or not he can lead the nation in the next four years if he is reelected. What are your thoughts? Are you worried about the polling? Two things about that. First of all, objectively, President Biden is doing a really good job. <clears throat> the economy is strong. Unemployment has stayed low even as we've reduced inflation. Um, he's helped build the coalition to defend Ukraine against Russia. Top to bottom, I mean, it, it's hard to see uh, an, an argument that Joe Biden isn't on top of what he's doing as president. I think he's capable of doing that going forward. Second, it's really important to remember, um, all of us running for office, we have flaws. Nobody's going to be perfect. If you ask a question to dissect someone, what do you like, what don't you like, there's going to be criticisms. That's the nature of it. But I come back to the fact Joe Biden's doing a good job. Um, and I think he's in a strong position to run next year. And we'll go have that election. I mean, it's always going to be difficult, uh, but I think the president's well positioned to run for re-election. Representative Adam Smith, thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, with all that is going on, I appreciate.